Hello, welcome to Cloud World. My name is Sergio Castro. I'm with Oracle University. I'm a principal, consultant, and evangelist. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Security Overview. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, my name is Sergio Castro with Oracle University. And today we are seeing, uh, getting started with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Security. So these are the objectives. We are going to be seeing the shared responsibility model that's between you and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, key OCI security and services features. And we'll see a use case. And lastly, we'll see compliance in all the compliance bodies that we comply with. So we have security for every single aspect of your cloud infrastructure environment, detection and remediation with Cloud Guard, security zones, and scanning of vulnerable possible issues that you might have. Data protection, protect your data from start to end all the way from you when you save it in transit or at rest, there's data protection for it. Operating system and workload protection with the Bastion as a service with shielded instances or dedicated hosts. That means a whole physical dedicated host for you to use if you want to leverage that. We have identity and access management with two-factor authentication with federation and you can audit your activity in that of your users in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And of course, there's infrastructure protection with the web application firewall, security lists, and network security groups. And lastly, and new to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is the network virtual appliance that you can deploy on your own network. I do recommend that you pay attention to it. It's brand new. You can find great literature on the 18 Chronicles. And I'll share my email at the end. If you're interested in finding more information, I can gladly point you to this literature that I'm talking about. But first, let's go ahead and talk about the shared security model. If you have your resources on premise, you're responsible for everything from unboxing your servers and your networks from cabling all the way to data protection and devices and identity and all of that. With the shared security model, you don't have to worry about the operating system. You don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure. However, there are services that we provide to you that you subscribe to them. And for those, you are responsible for the guest operating system as your virtual machine of your bare metal. You're responsible for it and how you manage it and what tables you enabled on the firewall. Uh, the network control, applications all the way to data. So if you grant access to a user, then you can enforce multi-factor authentication on it. Now, identity domains is another one of our services. You can have several identity domains and an identity domain represents segmentation of your population. So you can have your applications users on one identity domain and you can have your database users on another identity domain. So you decide how to, how you leverage that, or you can um, stay with only one or use Active Directory as your identity domain. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the identity concepts. We have users and groups. Now a user by itself cannot leverage Oracle Cloud Infrastructure if that user doesn't belong to a group. Necessarily needs to belong to a group because policies and permissions are applied to that group. Once the user's part of a group, then you can segmentate and segregate the access that groups have to resources via compartments by applying policies to those groups against compartments. And that way you can manage, the user can manage the resource or use the resource or only view the resource, you can decide on that. So here we have sample common policies, for example, allow the group, there's a group called the network administrators to manage. Notice that this is a birth, the virtual network family. And here's represented in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure in a given region and availability domain. So he's able to manage everything 
regarding networking. However, we have other resources and another group will manage the instances and another group can only use those instances. So you can get very granular on the permissions and the policies that you apply to your resources and compartments and groups. Now, the virtual cloud network offers really vast amounts of security from, from the nature of the subnet where you place your resources to the security list that we mentioned in network security groups. And also the route table can be a form of security if you route with the least privileged hardened policies as we call them. And with the, net, the virtual cloud network, I was mentioning that you, the nature of the subnet, you can have a public subnet that allows access to and from the internet, as you can see here through the internet gateway with this bi-directional arrow, or you can have access to the internet, but not from the internet into your resources. And that's through a private subnet. So a public subnet, the resources in a public subnet have the option of having public IPs or resources in a private subnet does not. You only gonna have private IP addressing on it. Now with IPv6, there by nature, you don't have RFC 1918 equivalent. So, but if you place a resource on a private subnet, then by the definition of being private, that IPv6 will only have access within the private realm. Now we have the Oracle services network. And if you want to securely communicate from on-premises to an internet facing resource, you can leverage that through a combination of gateways, the dynamic routing gateway and the service gateway will bypass the internet and access your public facing resources from Oracle cloud infrastructure. Now the security list, we mentioned a little bit about it. A security list is a mechanism that we call sort of a firewall that will allow access into your resources. And you have to specify what resources and what port you're going to be leveraging on those resources. So a security list is applicable to all resources in a given subnet, all of them. And now we can specify stateful or stateless, the nature of the permission. Stateful means that you only define it once and stateless means that you have to define it from incoming and outgoing traffic. So the fact that you on a stateless, you have enable a permission for traffic going out. It doesn't mean that traffic coming in is automatically going to be enabled. You have to declare it as well with the stateful. You only declare it once. As you can see here, we have three security lists applicable every single resource that belongs into this subnet is bound by this security list and similar to the, to these ones. The security list is enforced at the VNIC level of the resource of the compute instance or the load balancer or any resource that you're applying into your um, subnet of the virtual cloud network. The network security group is another security feature that is can work in conjunction or in place of security list. The network security group is independent from the subnet. You can have the same network security group applicable to resources in different subnets. As you can see in the example, here we have a subnet A and resources are bound by network security group A and network security group B. Now this is another subnet bound by network security group A. The way that I can best explain this is that a network security group creates exceptions. For example, on a network, uh, on a security list, you, uh, on a subnet, you might have, let's say 80 resources, 80 compute nodes on that subnet. And all of those are going to be bound by one security list. So if you are going to be having a web server on that subnet, it doesn't make sense to enable port 443 or port 80 on the whole security list if you're only gonna have one web server. So then you can go ahead and create a network security group and apply it to that web server, to the compute instance, the VNIC of that compute instance, 
with port 80 or port 443 and that will be the only service out of the rest of the 80 on that subnet that will be enabled for port 80 or port 443 for the web server now the bashing service that i mentioned is a way for you to have access into your private resources from the open internet and it's a managed service. Sure, you can enable your own Bastion server if you want, but the OCI Bastion as a service allows you to delegate that, that task to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and it's free of charge. If you enable your own Bastion server, you have to pay for the compute instance. And it's not as secure as the OCI Bastion because the OCI Bastion service or Bastion as a service will allow you to create sessions that are valid up to three hours, up to three hours. So if you need to enable a particular session for, for port 1521 for your database or port 22 to manage the operating system of a compute instance, then you can go ahead and do that. It's going to be only open for that period of time. And after that, if you need to create or enable another one, you have to go and, and do it again. So it's more secure, a little bit more of, uh, of um, work, but more secure. And Oracle is a secure company. We want to make sure that your resources on OCIS are, they are as secure as they can be. Now, database security in OCI, we have many options for database. Here we're seeing the database cloud service, Exadata, cloud that means the whole exadata rack or half of it or a quarter of it you can leverage that as well and we have the autonomous database which is self-driving self-patching self-secure and you have several ways of controlling the access to them with database safeguards database encryption patching the autonomous database is self-patching and you can have security assessments against your database so and that's only mentioning a few of the database. We also have the uh, MySQL database and the NoSQL database. Now you can prevent deletion, uh, deletion of a database by any identity and access management. So you can ensure and be very granular with the safeguards with the identity and access management. You can have the recovery manager enabled and encrypted and the virtual machine based database cloud service, which is either a virtual machine or bare metal. Now the virtual machine base, the communication between the storage and the node itself, it's through the Oracle secure network. A data safe is a service that allows you to manage not only your Oracle cloud infrastructure resources, but also on-premise databases that you might have uh, working in correlation. Maybe the Oracle cloud infrastructure database is the backup or the disaster recovery for the on-premises one or maybe you're upgrading so you can leverage data uh, safe or fully manage your database and uh, get the activity uh, in a very graphical way of viewing. We have several options. The uh, autonomous database is can be online, means uh, on the open internet and the security is through TLS. You can have private endpoints or you can have uh, on-premise connector from your database into um, cloud customers. So there are several options that you have for your data safe architecture options. The object storage security, you can encrypt your data. You can have your private buckets with pre-authenticated requests. You can have your buckets with um, open uh, only to a certain set of users. You can have enable versioning on your, on your object storage and the uh, resources that you have in it. And you can have archive and you can have active or standard object storage. Now, SSL handling, you can enable certificates on OCI. Uh, you can create a certificate authority and create certificates. You can bring certificates from a trusted authority into OCI and deploy, deploy them on a web server on a load balancer. And if you deploy them on a load balancer, you can have end-to-end -end termination all the way from the client to the nodes that are hitting, sitting behind the, the load balancer, or the encryption can be all the way to the load balancer while the communication between the load balancer and the backend set, the nodes in the backend set,
can be unencrypted because they're on OCI trusted network. And normally, typically the backend nodes from the backend set are on a private subnet. But you can you have all of these options, tunneling end to end or SSL termination. The web application firewall for your applications. We have the web application firewall from Oracle Cloud Infrastructure that allows you for SQL injection or cross-site scripting. You can also manage bots, attacks, and you can enable access to regions while blocking other regions from accessing your um, content. For example, you might have a US-based uh, service that you don't want access from abroad because you're not servicing from abroad. So you can block all that traffic with the web application firewall. Now, the OCI security services, as you can see, is very, very complete and comprehensive. From Cloud Guard, auditing and monitoring, you can create uh, logs for your audit logs and review them later. Uh, we have the Oracle um, content and, and management, and you can um, manage your uh, logs and view them in, uh, in a way that provides uh, great information. So all, all of these logs, uh, you can later uh, retrieve valuable information from them. And we already mentioned the virtual cloud network um, security through the security list, the network security group, the route, the nature of the subnet, and batching access to them. I have not mentioned the security zone. You can create a compartment, and all of your resources that are there are froze. They cannot be changed. You can configure that. We have fault for key management and then identity and access management. Now, regarding the compliance program, Oracle complies with a vast amount of bodies in terms of security. So I hope that you have enjoyed this introduction or getting started to Oracle security. Feel free to reach out. My contact details are sergio.castro at oracle.com. Here's my phone number. And if you do reach out, I do have um, blog posts for the network uh, firewall appliance. And I can also provide you with the security white paper of how Oracle manages cloud services. Thank you very much.